Juliana, June, Liana. Everybody, please come back to your seats. So sorry that you have to wrap up, but <laughs> we, need to, we need to come back and, and share the, the discussions that you had with the group. Yeah, please take your seats. Okay, sure. Um, so, social inclusion group. Social inclusion group. Hi, Juliana. <laughs> I'm sorry, we need to um, come back to the seats now. So, Dulce, um, is it okay once people are settled if we start with your group first? Let's recall that earlier uh, Doreen um, had given us Einstein's definition of insanity. <laughs> it's doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. Let's surmount insanity in these discussions and you can share with us all of your brilliant new ideas. <laughs> so thank you so much. Okay. We're going to begin with a readout um, from the Access Affordability and Infrastructure Group. Would anybody like to come forward? Oh, we can start with, um, okay, why don't, while we're figuring that one out, we can start with the, the skills, jobs, and innovation group. My name is Margarita. Margarita, please, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. My name is Margarita, and our amazing group had a very uh, interesting discussion on the topic. So we have three questions. Should I ask them all together? Okay, so question number one. Are there any practices or policies in place that prepare educators, te teachers, or anyone in education, parents, and adults in general for the future skills, for transferring them to students? Um, and if there are any, are they transferred somehow to communities and regions that could adapt these practices as well? Question number two. How do we ensure that when we provide access to the internet, we also develop critical thinking as it goes, as the process of um, having access to internet is developing? And it's important for um, everyone who is getting access to, to internet to have access to developing critical skills too. Uh, we do not see it happening, and are there any practices like that in place? And question number three, with all the changes in jobs, in education, in technology, um, there will be a high speed of changing professions and having to think even more critically than <laughs> just critical thinking. Um, so mental health is very important, is a big issue here. And right now, majority of people do not have any education on mental health, resilience being able to be flexible to change jobs, to change professions, to, to use critical thinking on a daily basis and be okay with that. So are there any practices for that in place or being planned um, to bring into education as well as into social uh, communities? Thank you. Are there any questions? We'll open the floor for two or three questions and then we'll go into the next session. Or are we all happy that we've included everything? Okay, then we can go to the next group. Do we have a volunteer from the next group to do a readout? Can be anyone, any group. We, we, we can be Let's, formal. Let's move on. Can I ask John, please, to volunteer to speak on <laughs> governance? <laughs> okay, John, volunteer. <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we, we, were the, we were the governance group. We were, we were sh uh, small and strong. Um, no, we, we mainly talked about uh, inclusion in governance affecting and reflecting inclusion and exclusion in wider internet. So who makes, who makes the rules for internet can make a big difference on who actually gets what in internet in reality, in the, in the large, larger reality. So, and we noted, so we said governance is important. Another thing we talked about was that uh, governance is not necessarily government, and that a lot of making rules for the internet happens outside of government sphere. We had one participant from Libya, where more or less they don't have a functioning national government or a single national government at the moment. So he was talking about how the internet gets managed in Libya without a, a working government. Um, and then we talked about different inequalities in, uh, in uh, internet governance. So inequalities by country, inequalities by gender, inequalities by race, age, language, and, and much more. Um, I think that's fair enough. We can answer any questions if people want to pursue it with us. Hello, I want to add that we should attend his workshop, workshop number 72, and this is going to be on Thursday morning. Um, it should be of interest. Okay, any questions to John? Okay, then we can move to the next group. I can, I can go for the content group. Um, my name is Jan, I work at the Wikimedia Foundation which hosts and supports Wikipedia. And I can read a few of the guiding questions that we uh, discussed. Um, one is, uh, why is the creation of local content important and how is this linked to digital inclusion, connectivity and adoption? What is business, government and civil society doing to foster creation of local content? What role can academia play in this, in educating current and future technology developers to effectively support the expanding domain namespace to provide better access, choice and multilingual support to the global online community? What type of policy environment is needed to support locally relevant content? And then we had about seven more, um, and obviously we ran out of time. However, here's uh, what we sort of discussed. The bottom line is infrastructure isn't enough when it comes to content. You need to involve local community to really find out what actually is needed on the ground. Um, so feedback loops are important. Uh, research and, and academia can help there, of course. Um, one important piece is online identity, actually, um, how people are confident to um, speak their languages online, to um, really um, discuss their culture online and, and, and live their culture online. Um, don't force people to abandon their local language. Um, that also has to do or is linked to economic empowerment. Um, and it's also linked to, to a healthy domain name space where people really find themselves in the domain space um, as well. Uh, scripts matter. Um, from a Wikipedia perspective, this is where I um, sort of um, contributed. I think a local um, healthy news environment, media environment is super important. Um, you can't talk about things that aren't reported about because you don't know about them. So locally relevant content also relies on a healthy local news and media environment. That, however, um, needs to be able, um, needs to be freely shared as well. Um, so open source licenses, open access actually matters and enables people to share and participate in culture. Um, that shared culture then, locally relevant content, local content drives connectivity and adoption. Um, that, however, of course, also um, really relies on afford affordability, um, which, again, as we all know, is also a policy question. And then we have sort of gone full circle and come back to um, what kind of policy environment do you actually need to create for local content. So it depends on identity online, on domain name uh, questions around scripts, affordability, and really um, people empowering people to, to share uh, freely and, and confidently online. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sorry, uh, I would just add uh, for those of you who would be interested in these workshops, we do have three workshops for local content and multilingualism. It's workshop uh, 111. Uh, it will be on uh, Thursday in this room, room three. 
uh, from morning 9.30 to 11. The next one is workshop 216, online identity in the multilingual domain namespace. Uh, right after that uh, session, uh, starting at 11.05, the same room here. And the third workshop is uh, 244, inclusion and representation, enabling local content growth. Uh, again, Thursday, but starting at uh, 3 to 4.30, as well as I'll be. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. We have two groups left, I think, local content and skills, education, jobs. Do we have a volunteer from local content? Oh, okay. I'm confused. <laughs> Do Social inclusion. Okay. Social inclusion, please. So, hello, uh, and of course, if people from the group want to stop being pleased, please do it. Uh, we started from questions that were regarding some regulation concerning cybersecurity and the cleanup of some contents made by platforms and how these deci decisions can uh, usually affect and do more harm than um, kind of actually improve the participation and inclusion of marginalized group. Uh, and of certain categories uh, such as uh, people, uh, transgender people or uh, ex-drug um, um, addicts or uh, we have also uh, abuse survivors and now sometimes these groups are highly affected by some decision taken when it comes to cyber security. So we kind of also talked about um, the right to be forgotten and now some contents uh, that uh, the way in which some contents are regulated uh, arm these, uh, these groups. Uh, and how, you know, it's a complicated matter uh, because it's uh, really often these people are not included in the, in the conversation. And now some, many of these decisions are double, uh, are double edged swords. So, you know, uh, sometimes can benefit, but sometimes produce harm. And uh, actually, um, there was also this, uh, this came from me because uh, we talked a little bit about our context. And for instance, I also uh, wanted to include in the marginalized group um, people that are ex-convicts uh, that come from uh, area that are high risk of criminalization and often they're really excluded and there's a lot of stigma uh, when it comes to their participation to public spaces, including the internet ones. Uh, then we have a discussion about the in, um, inclusion of um, youth. Uh, and there were many inputs uh, because, of course, according to the context, there are different realities. So we have um, um, talking, for instance, how in Nicaragua uh, young people uh, are producing really often the apps that are proving to be beneficial for the whole community, or how instead, uh, maybe in contexts like the one in Asia, youth is seen more as passive and is just following the decision taken by adults. Uh, and then uh, there was us, the young people, saying how oh, we are still in the stage in which youth needs to be proved to be to deserve a place at the table when it comes to decision making, while when it comes to internet governance, really often young people can be expert and can bring creative solutions to problem, uh, and we shouldn't have. Uh, should be a stakeholder in the multi-stakeholder process on internet governance, not just because we are highly affected by the decision taken uh, by um, uh, when it comes to internet governance, but also because we may have, we may bring resources. But uh, there was also the issue like what we consider youth, because it's not an homogeneous group. Uh, and, you know, it's people under 35, it's people under 30, or this is a problem that uh, also in, um, in certain contexts, young people don't really have access to internet. So it's kind of, um, it's a big problem because in some countries in Africa, you, you know, people under 18 really don't even have um, access to internet. So of course, they're not aware. So we also raised the issues of uh, create awareness, uh, improve the awareness of young people in what they can do, uh, and uh, including them then in the decision-making processes. Then we didn't really have time because we had really many things to talk about. There was also the, uh, the question about how the IGF community can do further action to improve the experience of people with disabilities. Uh, but maybe I would like, uh, do you feel like talking? I think it would be better if you do it. So, sorry. And that's it. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Judy Okite from Kenya. Um, regarding the persons with disability, we, um, we discussed about inclusion into the IGF beginning from the local IGF all the way to the global IGF because we haven't seen that happening. Um, secondly, um, we talked about inclusion of uh, persons with disability even into the technical um, community because uh, mostly when technical community talk about access, they talk about infrastructure, but we'd like to hear more discussion regarding accessibility to content and information. Um, and thirdly, Okay, other important thing that we discuss is that we cannot talk about the uh, digital inclusion if we don't put or we don't enjoy to the discussion to the people that have disabilities. Because these people is that the person that know what is the problem, what is the issues. So we have to involve it to create the solutions. So thank you. Thank you. So we have our last group access. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Gobe. I'm from Botswana. Uh, what is Gobe from Botswana. Okay. Uh, our discussion was on, uh, was around uh, establishing of national uh, ICT frameworks uh, so that, such that we have uh, a framework which can promote uh, digital inclusion. Uh, we identify that in most uh, third world countries we have uh, a lack of infrastructure which makes it difficult for affordability to be, uh, uh, which, which, uh, let me breathe in, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> uh, we identify that in most of our third world countries we have a, a problem of affordability because of a lack of infrastructure. Uh, we had uh, an example of uh, Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. They have, infrastru they have infrastructure, but there's a lack of uh, another uh, fac facility, which is electricity. So in that case, we have uh, situations where there's infrastructure, but there's another uh, faucet, which is very limit which is, which is limiting to the operation of the actual infrastructure, which means that the these rural and urban divide in the area. Uh, we also had a look into the first generation world where we had uh, talks, a talk on uh, uh, the give me uh, the framework. There being national frameworks in the first world, first world countries, which actually lead and guide those first world countries into establishing methods and uh, strategies on how they can actually expand uh, the 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 lack of facility in rural and urban areas. Uh, another, another issue we, had, we talked about was uh, that of uh, we, we, we don't have regulators, ISPs, the social and the civil, actually engaging in development of policies within the national framework of, nation, of, of, the, of the nation as a whole. Uh, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, John, we had... Uh, we didn't talk much on the afford affordability because of a lack of time. And I think my colleague will actually take on from here. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would just like to add on to what has been said. Uh, basically, what we, we came to conclusion that um, there is, for affordability, there is a need for multi-stakeholders to contribute to the infrastructure. We cannot have only uh, internet when there is no electricity. We need electricity, internet, with the road infrastructure. There is the multi we need a multi-stakeholder to, to partake in this and also to share the cost. Uh, that, is our, that is what we came up with, that is the need because Having one infrastructure without the other, it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's a waste of money, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so we need to collaborate in a way that will be more effective because we, every, when we're talking about one uh, discipline wanting to penetrate instead of uh, um, woman economic empowerment, there is a need for access and all this. So there's, 
we need this to be collaborated so that we can all share the cost for the benefit of our people. And the people say the literacy, without penetration, without infrastructure, without the information, how can we expect these people to be expanding and to be advancing? So their infrastructure, we still have to come back that there is a need for infrastructure, there is a need to reach to these people. Because they don't have that, we are all forced to, uh, to go to urbanizations because that's where the resources are. So with that, and we also came up the, the need for revising of the framework that, that and uh, yeah, and uh, basically that the, the two main things, sorry, is the, we need, the need for multi-stakeholders to work together for different infrastructure to be to, for the rollout. And secondly, is the revise of the framework the pol on the policy levels. And for all the different stakeholders from the grassroots up and, that, and also horizontal for different NGOs and everyone to be coming together and collaborate on this to help out in the affordability and accessibility and access, not just access, but accessibility. Thank you. Okay, a, a round of applause. We're doing very well. We're exactly on time. <laughs> We're now going to open the floor for five minutes of questions. Um, we also want to open up to the remote participants. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions from the remote participants. If not, we can ask open to the floor. Anyone ha have any questions they would like to ask? Thank you. We have a question from the floor. Uh, I, I just have a, a small comment if someone wants to respond, that would be appreciable. Uh, for the record, this is Muhammad Shabir, and uh, I represent the Internet Society's Accessibility Special Interest Group. Uh, we have talked about affordability here. Uh, there is uh, a major point, and, and that, 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 that point I have been talking about in previous IGFS as well. So. Uh, when it comes to affordability, uh, for person with disabilities, this comes, the cost becomes doubled. Why? Because one is the cost of the technology that they are paying to obtain or to get access to the technology. And then when it comes to making that technology accessible, sometimes that, is, that cost is doubled than the cost of actual technology. Uh, for instance, if I give you the example, uh, the very famous screen reader JAWS. Uh, it costs a professional version, if someone wants to use it professionally, it costs like $1,200. So that means if you can buy a, a, a very high level hi-fi machine, a laptop in like $600, the cost of making that machine accessible would be double than the cost of actual technology. So we, when we, we think about affordability, we need to keep this aspect in mind. And also, uh, coming from uh, Pakistan, which, which is uh, uh, not part of the developed community, uh, it's part of the developing community. So for person with disabilities living in, in those part of the world, in Asia, in, in Asia Pacific, in Africa, that cost would be uh, harder to bear. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is still open for questions. Or are we all eager to get on to the more exciting stuff? Okay, then let, 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 let me just wrap up then. Um, first of all, I hope you enjoyed uh, this session. Uh, this session was really just designed to be an introduction. It's an interactive session. For us, you know, we, we wanted to get a sense of, uh, you know, what your thoughts are. You know, you're going to go on a journey. Uh, there's different journeys. One of those journeys is the inclusion track. Mm -hmm. And this is a slightly different approach to, to how we structured uh, the IGF. So towards the end, we'll also have a closing session. And at the closing session, we hope that you all come. Uh, the purpose of the closing session really is to get a sense from you, you know, is it working? You know, are we addressing the questions? What are, questions and uh, issues are, are, are we tackling, are there any gaps? So we, we really want this interactive, we want this two-way feedback. Uh, this is a session that's been coordinated uh, by the MAG. And you know, the MAG, there's 50 members of the MAG and uh, the MAG are the ones that work to
called together the IGF with the Secretariat and the UN. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, six MAG members with us today. So that's, that's more than 10% of the MAG, which are sitting here. So it, it's also important you know, for us as MAG members to, to get a sense from you as well. You know, we, 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 we have meetings almost every two weeks and we have face-to-face -face and, uh, you know, we get a bit isolated sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we need to be brought back to reality. So, but on, on that note, you know, I'd like to thank our keynote, uh, Ms. Bogdan Martin. I, I think her wisdom and our guidance is important to us. Uh, also thank our, my colleagues, uh, MAC members, uh, Susan, Dulcy, Afia, Diana, Rose, Juliana, June. I hope I didn't miss anybody. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the digital inclusion track, you know, w the reason we're excited is because it encompasses so much. You know, it's covering access, affordability, infrastructure, local content, multilingualism, skills, education, jobs, social inclusion, and of course, governance. Um, and we, we, without true digital inclusion, you know, many of us are excluded from the other benefits of, of, of the net, the internet, uh, it, it makes it difficult for us to participate in the AI conversations, big data conversations, and it can often lead to a global north push to the global south because we don't have the skills, we're not digitally included, etc. So, for it, it, it's, it's, for us, I, th I, th I think it's, it's an important uh, precursor, really, that we need to have equitable digital inclusion for all so that we have an equal society and a, and a all equal rights and participation in, into the new digital economy, which is going to shape everything we do. You know, there was mention that uh, you know, we, we, forty percent of the kids leaving school, you know, will have jobs that haven't even been created yet, and and that is scary. And when you come from a continent where uh, the bulk of our schools are disconnected from the internet, you know, we're not preparing our youth for those jobs of the future. So we, we need to address those uh, issues early, earlier. You know, there, there are questions about uh, spectrum, and spectrum is key. You know, the, way, the ways that we've managed spectrum in the past is not conducive for us uh, achieving uh, full digital inclusion, getting everybody connected. You know, we, we do need to start doing things differently. We need to look at how we allocate uh, spectrum differently, how we enable community networks. There, there's a few workshops on community networks, and you know, th those, those are often the warriors that are in the last mile that are known by the communities that are trying to connect those communities so we have connected societies. But they don't have access to spectrum and they have complex processes to go through. So we, we, we need to make it easier for people to, commit, to be connected. We need to make it more affordable. But the, the, these are topics that are going to be discussed over the next two to three days. And you know we're hoping that uh, you will follow our, this track, digital inclusion track. I know there's so much else going on as well. Uh, but we, we need everyone's participation in the workshops. You know, we need everyone's voices heard. And hopefully, you know, those voices can shape some of the decisions and policies that may come out of, of the IGF and the feeders, because what comes out of here actually feeds into a lot of other decision-making bodies. So e everything we say and, and all the participation and contribution that we make uh, is valued. So on behalf of uh, the MAG, my colleagues, uh, we hope you enjoy this session or have enjoyed the session and we hope you enjoy the three days that you have ahead of you and we hope to see you around and we want to interact and talk to you and get a sense of, you know, are we doing a good job or <laughs> are we not? So on that note, thank you very much.
there's quite a few that have never been well, to be before. Uh, you know, they've been to the ITU. Really, I think you are right. But they don't engage with you.